First John chapter two. First John chapter two. First John chapter two. We're going to look at verses fifteen through seventeen. First John chapter two, verses fifteen through seventeen. The title of the message is, "Are you any different from the world? Are you any different from the world?" First John chapter two, verses fifteen through seventeen. The Bible says, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Brother Calvin, can you please pray for the message? Dear Heavenly Father, in Jesus' name we pray. We thank you, Lord, for today. That we get to come here and hear the preaching, hear the word, hear the truth, Lord. And I thank you for our pastors, our teachers, Lord, uh, for preaching the truth and helping us understand the meaning of your words, Lord. So, Lord, I just pray that at this time, they bless us here, bless the lost souls out there who's watching on the YouTube ministry, Lord. Have mercy and grace on your souls, Lord, especially that, that gentleman in the car that drove by on Friday. Lord, I just pray for those people, if they're watching, Lord, um, please soften their heart, um, soften their ears, Lord, help them to listen and understand and turn away from their sins, their ways, and turn towards you, Lord. For now is the day of salvation, Lord. And Lord, I pray that they will get saved today. And for us here, Lord, I pray that you fill us with your Holy Spirit and help us to understand your word. And I pray that you fill our pastor with your Holy Spirit Amen. and give them the, the wisdom, the knowledge, um, the power, the authority to preach the truth to us, Lord, as if you are talking to us directly. And help us to apply this teaching to our lives, Lord. Bless the congregation. Be with us. Keep us safe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Are you any different from the world? The Laodicean age church that we're in, you know, typical Christians this day and age are very lukewarm, yeah. as the Bible says in Revelation chapter 3. What that means is that many of the Christians like to put their foot in both places, world and God. Yeah. They like to put their places everywhere at church and worldly places. So I like to put their places everywhere. Godly people, worldly people. Majority of the Christians in America this day and age, I would say are all conformist. They're all conformed to this world. If majority of the Christians in this world, especially in America, were separated unto the Lord and giving their bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto the Lord, our country wouldn't be like this. Amen. The world wouldn't be like this. So we got to kick that garbage out of there already, that in your mind, that we're at last day, we're in a revival, you know, everything's getting better. Like Harvest Crusade, bring everybody here with the Christian rock music, yeah. you know, people getting saved left and right. They're not getting saved left and right. I've been there. You're all there just doing praise and worship all night right. and then saying a prayer and doesn't even know what you're really talking about. Amen. That's the type of the Christian world we're living in today. People are out there, their goal is to what? Not be separated, not be opposite, not hating the world. They're actually compromising. They're aligning themselves to the world, especially inside the churches. Many churches are no different from the world. All they do is what? Trying to grow number after number and number. The most popular course in any seminary, college, Christian college is, you know, growing the numbers in your church. Wow. Like I mentioned, I mean, blueprints out there. They send out a survey to the neighborhood that they want to set up their church. They say, what do you like to do? You know? If you're a Christian, what do you like to do? What do you want to see at the church? And all they say is, oh, you know, I like this type of music. 
Can you believe it? They give them a choice. Rock music, rap music, R&B, traditional. And obviously, this day and age, a lot of people will choose, oh, rock music, that sounds good. You know, rap music, that sounds good. R&B music, that sounds good. Traditional, no, no, no. It's too boring. It's too slow, you know. There's no excitement. There's no drums, right? Yeah. You know, when people first come to our church, a lot of times they get surprised. We're the drums. <laughs> we don't need no drums, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, that's not for a Bible-believing church. Right. And then so they check it. And then this, you know, leaders, pastor and the guys will have a meeting. Okay. So these are the survey that we receive. You know, some of them we did door to door. Some things we did, you know, mailing service. Yeah, oh, people really like this type of music. You know, we gotta bring that music in, right? Oh, people really like, you know, this amount of time for their sermons, 50 minutes or less. You know, <laughs> oh yeah, you know, you can you don't ever preach, you know, more than 15 minutes, you know. And then oh yeah, you know, they love to have a, you know, some kind of a coffee bar in the back. You know, we got to build it. And they really want to have a screen, like big screen TV. Yeah. You know, like at a fast food restaurant, yeah. you know, where you could just be eating food, you know, enjoying yourself and watching message on TV. That's what they want. And guess what? That's what churches have come to. Yes. They became a social club. Yes. You know, I, I don't even have to tell you, many of the churches, like popular churches, you go there, they have all of those. Yes. All of the above. Right. You know, yeah. forget about this traditional hymns, giving glory to our Lord and Savior. Amen. Hundreds and thousands of songs. No. Yeah. Get a projector. You put it up here. Okay, everybody, raise your arms and then go left and right. Concert. And all you say is, you know, say, repeating the same thing over and over and over and over and over, right? And, you, and then now your flesh is so excited, yeah. Yeah. right? And then you don't even know why you're crying. And you just start crying. It's like just like at a rock concert. Yes. No different, Amen. right? But that's how the church has become. Yes. That's how the Christians have become. Many Christians are no different from the world. Do you want to know real Christians, how they acted? You know, during the days of, you know, Roman Empire, our martyrs, they were known as atheists. They're like, oh, what do you mean? You know, they believe in God. They stood for the perfect word of God. What Catholic Church did was that, if you are not, they're polytheists. They believe a lot of gods. Yes. You believe it or not, they have a lot of idols everywhere. Yes. And then they believe it. And Bible-believing Christians are saying, no, we believe in one God, Amen. right? You know, we believe in Trinity. We believe in one God, God in three persons. Yes. We're not going to worship those idols. Amen. And the Catholic Church told them, you're atheists. You're not bowing down to these you know, idols, those figures. And what happened? That's why they were martyred. Yes. You know what's the characteristic of a Bible-believing Christian? Very intolerant, <laughs> right? Our forefathers of faith, they were very intolerant. Yes. They never wanted to conform to the Catholic doctrine. Amen. I mean, they gave up their life for it. Yes. They were so intolerant that Catholic Church, they forcefully brought him to the Colosseums to watch their brothers and sisters in Christ get killed by the gladiators killed by all these wild animals and beasts. Yes. And then they were thrown in as well. Why? Because they were different from the world. Amen. How are you different from the world this day and age? Preach. I'm not talking about when you first got saved. A lot of people are different when you first get saved. You have that first love. You know, you're gung-ho. You want to be holy. But time has passed by for many of you. It's been months. It's been years. Yes. It's been tens of years. Where are you standing today? You know, a lot of Christians are only thinking about the past. You know, I used to lead people to the Lord. I used to live a holier life. I used to read the Word of God. I used to pray. What's that used to got to do with present? Right. What are you doing right now? What are you doing? Are you really different from the world today? Right? 
We saw it in our text today, 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. I mean, if you love the world, God's love, people can see God's love in you. Simple as that. You know who was a very prime example? It's sad, right? Let's turn to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. You and I do not want to be like Demas. Now that's point number one. Let's not be like Demas. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 10. I mean, we're going to see him, but he loved the world and he left the ministry. How many times have you heard, how many times have you seen where the old faces are no longer here because they became demons? It's very easy. You and I cannot be guaranteed unless we are right with the Lord. Constantly, we judge ourselves. Constantly, we get on our knees. Constantly, or else I could be demons tonight, tomorrow. You could be like that. Second Timothy chapter 4, verse 10, the Bible says, For Demas has forsaken me. Can you believe it? He's seen what Apostle Paul has done in his ministry. But he has forsaken him. You know, the saddest thing that happens to a ministry is that you see brothers and sisters who are really faithful serving the Lord, but forsake the ministry and leave, right? Somehow their heart left them. Somehow they started loving the world. Verse 10 again, For demons have forsaken me, having loved this present world, and it departed unto Thessalonica, Crescens to Galatia, Titus unto Dalmatia. You see, demons fell in love with the world. And if you fall in love with this world, brethren, this is why you're falling in love too. World is an evil system. This world is an evil system according to the word of God. You love this evil system. Who wants to love evil here? Nobody wants to say that I love this evil world. I love this evil world system. Do you want to date young men and young women or anybody else you know, who's single? Do you want to date an evil person? Hundred out of hundred person will say no. Why do you want to date an evil person? Marry an evil person. But Christians are in love with this evil system. They don't realize that, secondly, it's a temporary system. It's going to go away. You know, I mean, all the money that you're saving, all the fame that you're trying to accumulate, it's going to disappear. The system itself will disappear. Thirdly, if you love this world and if you live... The ministry, if you give up your faith, you're loving a system that is anti-Christian. You yourself says, I'm a Christian. Then why do you love something that's anti-Christian? You're really contradicting yourself. It's like those protesters who's all for Palestinian, especially women, who says, I love Palestine. But when you go there, you got to be treated like, you know, less than a normal human being, Right? You have no freedom of speech. They contradict themselves. As a Christian, if you love the world, you love anti-Christian system, and you love a destructive system. This world is destructive, yes. right? I mean, just look, just turn on TV. You don't hear much good. I mean, 90% is all bad things. Crime, inflation, you know, I mean accidents, you know, people dying everywhere. Do you love this world? I mean, this is the world that devil wants you to love, Yes. right? So what is devil's goal, right? Devil has a goal for you and me. Let's go to Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12, Romans chapter 12. You and I have to really rethink about how much you and I are different from this world. Because if you haven't been thinking about it lately, then you probably have conformed to it in some way. Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2, our familiar verses, it's verses on consecration, 
Romans chapter 12, verse 1, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that he present your bodies a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that he may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Verse 2 says, be not conformed to this world. You know, devil's goal is for you and me to conform to this world. Yeah. Simple as that. When you're conformed to this world, you can't do anything for God. Why? According to chapter 12, verse 2, if you are conformed to this world, you cannot find the will of God. Yeah. A lot of Christians say, I want to know the will of God. I want to know what God wants me to do. I want to do it. And I go, Preacher, why am I having such a hard time finding God's will? Because you're living in the world. You love the world, and you're conformed to this world. If you are conformed to this world, you cannot find the will of God. Simple as that. Then you must realize this. Christian is no longer part of this world when you trust that Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Amen. Right? And you're not to be a friend of this world if you are a Christian. Right? If you want to be enemies of God, I mean, literally, yeah. love the world, have friends. And you're not to love the world as we saw in 1 John chapter 2. And you're supposed to separate yourself from the world as a Christian. That's how you are not going to be conformed to this world. When you separate yourself from the world, when you not love the world, when, you don't, when you're not friends of this world. What happens to many Christians and what happens to you and me when you love the world? You are forsaking certain people. When you love the world, number one, you forsake the Lord Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior. You know, in a relationship, I think the most hurtful thing that you could do anybody is when you forsake them, right? Yeah. When they need you the most, you know, when they really need someone, they gave all their heart to you. In this case, Lord gave his life to you. Amen. And then you turn your back on that person. You forsake that person. You know how much hurt that you give to that person? And that's why people say oh, breakups are hard, right? It yeah. is. But when you constantly love the world, you're constantly forsaking Lord Jesus Christ, who saved you from hell, who's inside of you. Yes. I mean, it's a mystery. Your body of Christ. Amen. You're forsaking your own body. Right. Yeah. Not only that, if you love the world, you're forsaking your own saints. Your brothers and sisters in Christ. Think about that. The more you love the world, the more you're going to alienate your brothers and sisters in Christ. The more you love the world, the more you're going to be further away from brothers and sisters in Christ. Even though we all are same body in Christ. That's why many people who love the world, they don't like things of God. They don't like the ministry. They don't want to be there. Why? Because they feel very uncomfortable. Because you're full of the world. It's like, you know, in this room, people have all the knowledge of dogs, right? In this room, people have all the knowledge of cats, right? But this cat person goes into the dog room, they're going to feel kind of uncomfortable. Yeah. And the cat dog person going into all bunch of cat people, they're going to feel uncomfortable. If they only love, you know, one of each. As a Christian, that's what's happening, right? I mean, you're saved. You're bought with a price. Yeah, nice. I mean, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, it says, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that he present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. You are to give your bodies a living sacrifice. It's given. And that's the people here. Not loving the world, not conformed to this world, but people here. They're, you know what they're doing? You know, you are to give your body to God because why? You know, everything you have is from God in the first place. Yes. Right? Let's look at just verse up there, Romans eleven thirty six. For of him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. Everything you and I have is from God. That's it. Lord Jesus Christ, creator of the universe. It's a rightful thing 
reasonable thing for you and I to give our bodies a living sacrifice. Yes. And because God has been merciful to you and me. Thank you, Lord. Chapter 12, verse 1, that he, I mean, by the mercies of God. God's been merciful to you and me. You and I, you know, without the mercies of God, we'll be burning in hell. Yeah. Straight down to hell. We wouldn't be alive right now, right? No. But because of that, don't you think that we should give our bodies a living sacrifice? Amen, amen. Then we can't be conformed to this world. And thirdly, as I mentioned, so that you can know the will of God. Again, the best thing for a Christian is to know the will of God and live it. Yes. You know, Bob Jones Sr. said that the man who is a success in this life is a man who finds out what God wants him to do, and he does it. Man, that is the whole purpose of our life in Christian life, right? The man who is a success in this life is a man who finds out what God wants him to do, and he does it then how can you not be conformed to this world? You have to have a minds of Jesus Christ. Minds like Jesus Christ, right? Let's go to Philippians chapter 2. Philippians chapter 2. So here's a solution. Philippians chapter 2. It's not a long message, but I hope that you and I can really understand that we have to be different from this world. People need to get saved. You're, you're the only Bible in Jesus Christ they see. Yeah. I mean, if they see the same thing in their life as in you, as themselves, how are they ever going to get saved? How are they ever going to see any difference? Philippians 2, verse 5. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. You have to think like the Lord yes. if you don't want to be conformed to this world. Then... Next question comes up. How do you think like the Lord? Do you have to ask him to talk to you in a dream? No. Thank God. Do you have to speak in tongues? No. no. Right? You have to get some healing powers? No, thank you. No. You go to the scriptures. Amen. You go to the scriptures. Right. What does the scripture say? Come on. To think like Lord Jesus Christ, you have to just go to the scriptures. Amen. Scriptures will tell you how it thinks like. Amen. The more you go to the scriptures, the more you will think like Lord Jesus Christ, the less conform you will be to the world. Amen. It has all the answers, right? If you haven't been close to the scriptures, then I guarantee you have been conformed to this world. Right. Simple as that. How can you have minds like Jesus Christ if... You don't go to the scriptures. You don't know what to think. No. I mean, all the, all the, how should I say, treasures in here. Amen. What to think, you know, how to act, right? What to pray, you know, what to do in any situation. It's here. If you are not in the scriptures, then you cannot know the will of God. You got to be conformed to this world. And you got to be the same as the world. I'm sorry. I think the worst thing that a Christian can do is be same as the world. You lose your testimony. You defy the Lord Jesus Christ, right? And you help, again, you are that catalyst sending a lot of people to hell because of your testimony. God did not write, you know, their blood shall be on your hands for no good reason. Because of your testimony, because of your unwillingness to open your mouth when it comes to things about salvation and hell and Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to burn in hell. How are you different from this world if you never talk about salvation? How are you different from this world if you never talk about hell? You know, if I never talk about hell, I'll be welcome everywhere. Seriously. People don't like that subject True. because a lot of them know they're on their way to hell, right? Yes. A lot of people don't like talking about or preach about sin, right? Yeah. You know, I mean, can you imagine if someone's like, you know, and we're talking about Christians, and they're talking about something stupid and dirty, and you goes, you know what? And as Christians, you know, our tongue shouldn't be talking like this, 
Now, you lose your friends very quickly. Yes. You know, or you keep the real friends that you need to have, yeah. right? Yeah. When you speak the truth, when you use the scriptures, King James Bible, you don't have to worry about, Lord, you know, I had a best friend for the longest time. I do want to keep him, but, you know, I love you more. So, you know, what should I do? Just tell the truth. Amen. Just talk from the scripture. Amen. If they love the Lord, they love the word of God, they'll stick with you because they know that you're different from the world and I want to be different from the world. But if not, you know, if you don't stand up for the word of God, the truth, and Lord Jesus Christ, you're going to be just like them. Yeah. And the one thing that I didn't mention, so if you love the world, you forsake the Savior, you forsake the saints, and finally you forsake the sinners. Yeah. If you love yeah. the world, you're forsaking it. That's I mean, good. I'm sorry, you and I, whether you, you think you're important or not, you're not that important. And our job is to be out there and lead as many souls to the Lord as we can. Amen. That's our ministry, right? Whatever is happening in your life, we all go through the trials and tribulations. We have our hard times, whether it be financially, whether it be health-wise, whether it be mentally, physically, even spiritually. But one thing that we can never stray away from as a Christian to be different from this world is to think about the sinners and where they're going. Yes. I mean, as we talk about that, you know, guy, you know, who was, you know, talking stuff on Friday night street preaching, we still want him to get saved. Amen. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Yes. You know, I hope he saw it. I hope he saw that, you know, we're different. We're not out there to just condemn you to hell. We want you to get saved from hell yes. because we want you to know that Lord died for you. Amen. But does the world see that in you, right? Are you any different? If we were to have any kind of survey, you know, as I conclude, if I were to, if you were to send out a survey to your 10 closest people at work, at school, you know, outside of work, I wonder how they're going to check mark. Simple, you know, 1 to 10. 10 being the closest to the, I mean, I mean, furthest away from the world, different from the world, but based on the Christian value and life, not because you're just crazy, cuckoo out there, you know, but one being the closest to the world. What would your average be, yeah. okay? Would you be closest to the 10, which means that you're closest to the Lord? How you ought to live as a Christian? Oh, man, are you down there in the toilet in one? Well, you have chance, brethren. Yeah. There's reason why you and I are you know, listening to this message. Amen. Because we have things to get right with the Lord. Yes, sir. And then there's some part in our life we're so close to the world that we've been far away from the Lord. Amen. You know, 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all righteousness. Yes. Love not the world. Are you any different from the world? Let's pray. Dear Father, as Christians... We have received the greatest blessing of eternal life through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, through his precious blood. But many times we live our daily lives not realizing that we're conforming to the world little by little. Help us to go back to our lives, examine it, judge it. And any, any part, if any part of our life has been lacking and running away from you, Lord, help us get right, confess our sins, and get close to you, Lord and be different from the world. Lord, it's natural that they're supposed to hate us. Do, do, does the world really hate us, or do they love us? That's a question that we have to ask, Lord. Help us to have love for the lost souls out there. Help us to have love for you. Help us to have love for our saints, and not become those unfortunate ending of our Christian brothers we saw in the Bible. Help us to live a victorious Christian life, just trusting in you, finding strength in you, and just knowing you more and more, having your mind by going into scriptures more and more. I pray that you'll bless the rest of the day, Lord. I pray that you come soon, Lord. Even so, come, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.